All right, welcome back to the BST Podcast. We are here with Terry Maddox from ASCS as well as the Now 600. Terry, how are you doing, sir? Good. How are you all doing? We're doing good. Uh, I know it's crazy times. I know uh, you've never seen this because I know I'm older than you and I've never seen anything like this. So you're probably wondering what the heck's really going on because I know I am. Uh, But at the end of the day, we just want to make sure that everybody understands 2020 race season, I believe, will happen. I believe what's happening is temporary to a point. Uh, I know it's tragic. I know it's a a bad deal. But, uh, you know, the, the show must go on in our industry. And I think at some point people are going to be looking for some entertainment because we've all been stuck in our homes and not being able to do anything. So I'm actually kind of looking forward to get racing sooner than uh, I have in a long time because of this, I think. How about you guys? Yeah, I mean, right now, in like our now 600 National Series, we've already ran seven shows, and how the schedule's worked out, it hasn't really affected us on that wise, and luckily with you all not starting until towards the end of April, I think everything we worked out by the time we're ready to go back. You know, um, I was I was kind of talking to you on the phone earlier, and we've mentioned this a few times, but... Uh, I'm really glad we started our season later than normal. So uh, typically we're thinking we can get, we've tried some shows in March and then we've tried some shows in April and man, well, as we speak, uh, we're in the middle of a, well, it's not a blizzard, but it's definitely one of those wet snows. So because of the weather here, not because of obviously the uh, coronavirus, uh, we we elected to start our season later. And I'm actually very glad for that because I think it's going to work out very well. Um, you know, now with the, with the now 600 stuff, Terry, obviously we brought that series here. Uh, I'll be honest. I, I really thought it was going to be an entry level division because I did not know much about it. Uh, last year, not last year, but the year before, of course, I went to that shootout, which I was in awe. I'm still in awe how you guys run, what is it? 12, 1400 cars over that four day period. Yeah. And uh, and then to see the level of drivers that are racing these 600s, because I really did think it was an entry level deal. It was just for kids, uh, but it's not that at all. Can you briefly describe the the 600s in a nutshell, real quick for people? Uh, we really we sanctioned three classes. We had the restricted class. Uh, which is a stock 600 class with a restrictor plate and those kids, uh, it's a kid class. So it ages between eight, 16 years old. And then our a class and stock on wing is a stock 600. And, uh, it starts out at 12, as little as 12 years old and goes all the way up to about, you know, 60 or 70. So pretty much a class, either winged or non wing is for pretty much anybody. Yeah. And, uh, we all know, I mean, one of your main superstars, Christopher Bell, was, was big in it, right? Yeah, he raced down to Oklahoma City and Port City and uh, moved on before Now 600 became uh, came about. But uh, that's where he got his start was in micro sprints. And then uh, Larson obviously has done some as well, correct? I believe so. Yeah. So, so anyways, I, I mean, the, the 600, it's, it's way bigger than what I thought. And, uh, anybody wants to second guess that just go to that shootout in what is that the January or the end of December? When do you put that on? Uh, this week, this year will be the first weekend of, the, of January. First week in January. And, uh, once again, it's, it's 1400 plus cars, correct? Yeah. Between seven classes. Now, now between those seven classes, uh, for the most part, you're thick in the Oklahoma area, but what are some of the other states that the 600s are big in, and uh, where else do you run these? California is really big. Indiana is pretty big. Uh, Texas is starting to get back up there, but the big, the big ones are really Pennsylvania, Indiana, Oklahoma, and California. Nice, nice. Well, uh, now let's go back to Colorado, which is why obviously we're talking to you. Um, not that I'm not interested in the national stuff, but our Colorado series basically runs between El Paso and I-76. But unlike last year. Uh, since it was kind of just starting, we, we let the, the restricted run with the, the open class and, and essentially, uh, you know, that, that did not work very well because it's kind of like going to a gunfight with a knife this mm-hmm. year, this year, uh, we need to express and tell everybody that we are dividing those and we will have that restricted class for the kids, which, uh, man, I can't tell you how many calls I've gotten from quarter midget moms and dads and people running go-karts or things like that. So I think this is definitely the stepping stone for the youth to get into 
from what I can see. I, I actually can't see another division out there that even holds a candle to it. Can can you? Correct. I mean, there's uh, some junior sprint stuff, and those are uh, kind of like go-karts in a way. They have go-kart motors and stuff, but it's pretty much kind of like running a quarter midget. So you go from a quarter midget to a restrictor, and then you move up to A-class, and then move on to midgets or sprint cars. Exactly. And then speaking of, so so the 600 class here, I believe, is going to be better than it's been. Uh, we started it a couple of years ago, and then last year it definitely got some legs. I know I got a lot of people interested. Our season starts the 25th at El Paso County, which, which by the way, County leadership there has given us the go ahead for our season opener on Saturday, May uh, or April 25th, uh, due to the fact that the county right now, the restrictions that we have are pretty much shut down for a month as we speak, and it's going to open back up on April 19th. So uh, we're, we're a go for our season opener there. Then, of course, it also at 76. And uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to this season with the now 600s, but the, the real big surprise is our sprint cars um so uh, enough with the 600s i think that's going to be great but now let's get into the sprint cars of course the scs sprint cars non-wing mind you um oh, we can we can talk briefly about the struggle we've had uh, you you know the sprint car struggle out here in colorado that we've had uh mm-hmm. it was it was pretty sorry for a while uh, I was adamant about not giving up on it because I believe sprint car racing is something that uh, a lot of people want to want to see and watch. Um, I can tell you honestly, as a promoter, it's one of the main reasons my phone rings. Uh, so when it comes race day or the week of a race, uh, nine times out of ten, when that phone rings for race related issues, they want to know if sprint cars are racing. So. On, on my end as a promoter, I knew it was essential to come up with a good, healthy sprint car program that people were, uh, you know, wanting to watch. I think the biggest problem with anything, um, you know, the sprint cars, the late models, the top echelon cars, it was the amount of money people were spending, the horsepower that they were putting to the ground. That being said, when you make it wingless, it makes it so much fair and they can't hook up that horsepower so essentially what's what's going on in my opinion with this division which seems to be somewhat new wingless sprint car is not new by the way but the division that you guys have all kind of come up with that we've uh, embraced that seems to be going so well is kind of a run what you brung motor wise but obviously wingless and it seems to be you know equal to where guys in 305s are winning the same time with a, a carbureted motor compared to a guy with a 410 is is that what you are seeing throughout the country as well yeah on the wingless deal there's a lot of uh, saints new bodies that went to open competition on their not on their non-wing deal of course ascs is mainly known for our wing 360s but uh we got into a couple of these series that wanted to be sanctioned underneath us and so we you know basically had a rules package from our elite deal down in texas and kind of adapted to that to have an open competition to where any if you have a motor sitting in the garage and a sprint car frame just put together and you're off to the races well and it's funny that you say that because i mean the guys that are calling me there's some guys that haven't raced in 10 years 20 years and they still have these cars or these motors that they they never did get rid of and i I don't know if it's so much uh the technology but it seems like a 15 year old or a 10 year old sprint car can run with a brand new one just due to the way that, I mean, there's still bar cars and, um, I, I guess back to the thing, taking the wing off. So, so a guy can be just as competitive with an old car as, as a new car. It, it, doesn't that seem to be fair? Yeah. Cause I mean, it just mainly comes down to, um, how the motors are i mean on, with non-wing cars and with especially you know how small the tracks are that you all have up there they're not half miles like we have around the country those three if like Kenny bun that wants to go buy a 305 that doesn't really have a a motor just need to say but still has a, a car you know you can put a five or seven thousand dollar 305 motor and still be competitive with the 360s because you're not pushing so much horsepower you're not spending the tires going into the corners exactly and so back to the scs elite north series which is obviously what we're calling it uh that season that season starts april 25th at el paso runs through all the way to september 26th back to el paso but in between there we're running i-76 speedway at fort morgan and then we're actually at phillips county the 38s which uh, I'm excited to see him there because you did mention we do have the short tracks. Basically, El Paso and I-76 are quarter miles. 
which put on excellent racing. I mean, we've had your national series there. Sammy Swindell won that. We've also had the World of Outlaws there. Um, you know, that that was an excellent show. So the size definitely adds to the action. But I believe uh, I, I'm really excited to see these guys kind of open it up on the big three eights out at Holyoke. So I'm interested to see that one, see how that all works out. But I think this 2020 uh, Elite North Series wingless sprint car season right now, I know of 20 people that claim they're going to be there on our season opener. I don't, I don't think we've seen 20 sprint cars in Colorado in 20 years, to be honest. So uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward. I hope you guys are too. Um, and uh, can you tell us anything else, everything else going good out there in Oklahoma, what's going on on the national side of things, or what's going on with these uh, shows? You're not getting too many canceled, are you? No, uh, we so far on the ASCS national tour, we ran two shows in Arizona in February, and then we had two shows get in in California. And then this weekend we were supposed to be in Dallas, Texas, and it got rained out and then dealing with the coronavirus stuff. So we're just, but luckily all the schedules aren't supposed to pick up till later in April. So hopefully everything's over with and we get back into our normal routine. Nice. Nice. All right, Terry, I want to thank you for calling in and having us, uh, telling us what's going on. I'm really excited with the ASCS stuff from the 600, uh, the now 600 stuff to the, obviously the sprint car stuff, but, uh, we'll keep in touch and uh, thanks again. All right. Thanks for having me. All right, Terry. Thank you. Thanks.